SON, Gwinnett County Fire. And Lieutenant, just talk to us about, you know, I mean, the major safety concerns, especially with that fuel leaking, you know, down and around into the sewers. So, um, as the police PIO uh, talked about, we got the call just after 7.50 p.m. to an initial uh, vehicle accident at I-85 northbound in Jimmy Carter. Upon that unit arriving on scene, we had one tractor trailer fully involved in fire. Uh, we just got the contents of that tractor trailer. It is going to be 8,500 gallons of, of fuel, uh, 7,500 of that being gasoline and 1,000 of that being diesel fuel combined with whatever was in the uh, saddle tanks on the tractor trailer. So with that uh, rupturing and leaking out into the roadway and catching on fire, it started to enter the um, storm drains that are on the side of the interstate. That quickly spread across um, and underneath uh, I-85 southbound and also uh, further on to Crescent Drive where those uh, spot fires started emerging from the storm drains. We had additional units dispatched to those locations um, along Crescent, uh, just in front of Ole Mexican Foods. We had a uh, power pole become involved in fire, which caused a power outage in the area as well. Um, the power company, uh, our Department of Water Resources, is working on uh, making sure that we have contained uh, the fuel that did enter the storm drain and know where it has spread to. Uh, because of the fuel in the storm drain, we elected not to put additional water on the fire. Um, the tractor trailer uh, was well involved, it was contained there, um, but it had entered underground and if we added more water to that, that would cause it to keep spreading further uh, down the interstate to where we had more uh, vehicles that were in harm's way. So we directed our, our manpower to evacuating the cars that were stuck in the traffic on I-85 northbound all the way back to Pleasantdale. Um, and getting those people out of their vehicles as quickly as possible and onto Dawson Boulevard. Um, on Crescent Drive, we were able to immediately get that shut down and get crews over to that area to start controlling the fires that were coming up from the storm drain. Um, I believe it may have uh, caused some brush fires and like I said, did involve the uh, one power uh, utility pole. And so, like, so y'all kind of just elected to let it burn out instead of putting the water to further like, you know, cause the gasoline to spread. It was safer to just let it burn out at that point? Yes, sir. Uh, the additional water would just combine with it, um, especially if you don't have enough to contain it, um, especially a flammable liquids fire where you have to add foam to it. Uh, so we do have uh, assistance from DeKalb County Fire Rescue uh, out here with us, their hazmat and their foam uh, unit on scene. We did end up using, as soon as it got down to a controllable amount of fire, we elected to go ahead and, and start applying foam to it to blanket it and, and smother the flames so that uh, the police department uh, could begin their investigation that DOT could open up uh, the southbound lanes of the interstate. Um, we used about 100 gallons of foam to control the remaining uh, remnants of fire and uh, bring the incident under control just about five minutes ago from an in update from the incident commander. And the status right now is it, it's all out? Yes, sir. The situation's under control. They are, uh, like the police PIO mentioned, uh, trying to find out the location of the tractor trailer driver. Lieutenant Wilson, can you tell us what resources does your department have on the scene, how many personnel, and, and what currently they're doing uh, to mitigate this? So we have 50 plus firefighters on the scene that we're working to control several different incidents. We had the I-85 uh, northbound main tractor trailer incident. Um, we also uh, managed to evacuate businesses within a quarter mile stretch on Dawson Boulevard and then the Crescent Drive incident. So it was a very fluid and uh, uh, very taxing incident uh, very quickly on the uh, western part of the county. Um, we are working with officials from DeKalb County Fire Rescue, uh, DOT, HERO units, um, several different police agencies, and um, also I believe the uh, EPD uh, and EPA have also been notified. So you don't know the whereabouts of the driver, of the truck? As far as I know, that hasn't been confirmed. And what's the status of the roadway? Uh, southbound, from what I believe, is back open, but northbound is going to remain closed for, a, for an extended period of time while Gwinnett County Police conducts their investigation. And, you know, this, this is obvious with that fuel leak, and that's a, an obvious where I'll uh, evacuate the businesses. This could have been a much, much scarier situation if that fuel could have leaked any further. Yes. So we, we are lucky that this is a pretty level part of the interstate, that it's not sloped back or, uh, uh, forward or backwards, especially into the uh, traffic that began to back up. Uh, I-85 northbound. So because of the uh, local response from the fire department, police departments, we were safely able to evacuate most people from their vehicles and get them to a safe location if it had spread uh, further down. And as of 1035 right now, you guys do not have a, you don't want to put a timetable out there for when any possible reopening of the interstate. I'm not aware of any possible reopenings of 85 northbound. 
um, yeah. between uh, because also um, I imagine DOT is also going to have to uh, evaluate the roadway because of the, the the large amount of fuel that burned on the road. Does it seem like there's any damage to the road, or we don't know yet? I'm not sure. I haven't been that close to it, and with us just getting it under control, I imagine when uh, when when the investigation is complete and they start removing the vehicles, we're going to see uh, what kind of damage was done to the asphalt. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To Gwinnett County Fire, give us an overview <laughs> as to what has transpired since about 8 a.m. when uh, both want to give an estimated both uh, points of uh, direction were stopped on I-85. We know this that the tractor trailer driver is unaccounted for. Uh, he has not been found, sadly. There is one fatality in this already. We don't know any other injuries, but there has been, Christy, some other elements about this that has been very interesting, mm -hmm. that the fuel from this overturned truck uh, began to run down the, uh, run down the, uh, the storm system there on, on uh, Dawson Boulevard and Crescent. They had to evacuate some of the businesses through there. It caught fire. A uh, utility pole also was uh, engulfed in flames. So they had really an escalating situation here as a result of the fuel, and this fuel had caught fire. Right, and all of this is making sense with some of the witness testimony we were hearing earlier where uh, we were live and we saw a second big black plume of smoke pop up. That could have been the brush fire that he said as the fuel was spreading. Um, and he said it caused a few other fires uh, as it went under I-85. Um, it's kind of like we're finally starting to piece together the story with that information there. Also, I thought it was really important that he said, we are very lucky that this happened on a level part of I-85. Um, your Facebook viewer kind of hit it on the head. He asked if they just let this fuel burn off and sounds like that's exactly what they did. They didn't use the foam until it got to a controllable size, and they decided not to use water because they didn't want it to uh, run down the interstate and under any of those cars that were trapped there waiting.